her again. And our guest, or Michael Pasantino, who's very involved with Pink Tie, but he's also involved with Trinity Solar, and Ray Thomas, who's also involved with Pink Tie. Uh, you've been telling us that people from all aspects of real estate are involved with Pink Tie and, and at these various networking events you have, and real estate lawyers. What are some t uh, other types of groups and professionals who attend many of these events in case our listeners want to connect with them? Ray? Sure. So um, we get all types of uh, insurance professionals, whether it be um, State Farm or, or things of that nature, because, you know, people that come to our event drive cars, for example. Uh, building inspectors, I mean, I'm sorry, housing inspectors, because they do the um, the same thing. They want to expect, you want to get your house expected when you purchase your house. Also financial advisors. Um, a lot of people are, are doing well and they're very successful. We have a lot of um, financial advisors like well, Wells Fargo, the Alpert Group that, that comes and they uh, give great advice to um, our attendees that, that come. So, you know, there's a wide range of uh, business professionals that come not just uh, realtors and bankers and um, and mortgage people, and various um, different attorneys and different practices also come out. Michael, anyone else you would add to that list? Yeah, Ray, I mean, when we first started, it was professionals networking for a cure. Um, I, I mean, it was real estate professionals networking for a cure. And over the years, it's kind of grown into professionals, contractors. I mean, anybody that really has that go-giver mentality can come in with any business they want, join Pink Tie 1000 for the $400 a year, and be able to be part of something that's bigger than just themselves. Go ahead, go ahead. And so let's say so they're a go-giver, but not much of a go-getter. So what do you have, what kind of tips will help someone max make the most of this kind of event or other networking events. So we'll, we'll go first to you, Michael, and then Ray. What we've found is over the last five years, um, you know, the people that have the mentality of coming in because they're just going to do business, uh, they kind of weed themselves out of pink tie. It's not for everybody. You have to have the right, you know, the right attitude. We have a company, um, A1 Entertainment, you know, a ticket broker, more of an experienced guy. Every single meeting that we have, we host them, Every Tuesday at the Refuge from 10 to 11, they, they open up their restaurant for us. We have about 100, 120 committee members that meet there. We have a networking for an hour. We have a half hour meeting about pink tie and what we're doing. And, uh, and we move on. And at those meetings is when every week we're getting new members that are coming in saying, we've heard about this organization, uh, and we want to do business with them. So if you're going to come into pink tie, come into one of those meetings on a Tuesday and see what we're about, see what the event is about. We'll introduce you to some people. And uh, that you take it from there, Ray. And what are the top, what are the tips would you have for people who want to network at some of your events? Yeah, you know, when you you come to network, uh, you should be prepared. And one of the best um, tools that you could have is a business card. I don't know how many times I've been to events and I ask people for a card, and they're like, "Oh, I forgot it." Not only do I bring business cards, I also leave spare cards in my car because in case it's a great event. You hand out cards. Oh, I'm out of cards. What do I do now? The other thing, too, is uh, you'll find I found that, you know, people have things missing on their card, their phone number, the email address. How are people supposed to contact you? And I find also it's good if people put some valuable reference information. It might be for a tax person, different filing deadlines, different terms for real estate or or some valuable reference, you know, maybe even a calendar in the old days or a tax chart. Valuable information, of course, what you do and what services you provide, maybe a slogan, maybe something that sets you apart from everyone else. Absolutely. You know, on the business card. Absolutely. And then when you get to the event, um, if it's your first time, introduce yourself. And there's two things. If the person is new, great, I'm new too. And then you can start a conversation and build that rapport. If the person that you meet happens to be a Mike Passantino who's a seasoned person and been there before, the first thing you do, oh, great, Mike, I'm new. You know, can you introduce me to some people? And that's how it gets rolling. And at these kind of events, no one should feel uneasy doing that. Not at all. Introducing themselves, breaking into a little group, or asking for someone to introduce them to someone else. Exactly. And our members will be more than happy to do that. And for Mike, for the season networker, what else would you suggest? <laughs> uh, you know, the, I, I got to say, I think the biggest part of uh, networking that people miss is you actually have to go and network. You have to show up at the events. We have people that are part of Pink Tie, and they, they say, "Well, we're not really getting any value." Do you come to the events that we pay for, and we, you know, we host once a uh, once a month, 
No, I didn't really get to get there. Well, you got to show up for the event. How I got this job at Trinity Solar, I got up at 6 o'clock in the morning, went to a networking event at the Huntington Hilton, and I live out east, and met a new business development guy who was looking for somebody to run Trinity Solar for New York State. So, so jobs and all kinds of other opportunities can come through networking as well. Oh, absolutely, especially and, at Pink Time. And I think these days some people say that two-thirds of all jobs come through networking because yep. you consider the alternative and sending your resume into Monster and someone going through those things and the person knows nothing about them. So at networking, you can find out what's a, a good lead and, and you know, yeah. get to know each other. Yeah, the social media guys have a slang term for it. They call it belly-to-belly -belly networking. <laughs> Because you get out there and you actually meet the person. And social media, you don't know if it's a real person, but face-to-face, -face you, you do. Exactly. What we like to do is, um, at Pink Tie, you know, we like to add a little bit of flavor to things. And so for our Pink Tie 1000 vendors, we like to give them added value. You know, everybody does golf outings. The season's coming. Uh, and we just, we don't see golf outing as, you know, the way everybody else sees it. So when they asked us, sponsor a golf outing. We partnered with the PGA Tour at the Barclays last year. They gave us 2,500 square foot pavilion. We provided uh, cigar rollers. We had food. We had beer and wine. We had a great experience. We had a couple of hundred people a day attend from all walks of, uh, of the United States coming in for the Barclays. But when you're talking about getting to network with somebody for three hours because they're in your event that nobody else had... It was pretty impressive. So that's what we like to do. We like to give added value, have different experiences like we did with our um, with our first event. Ray will explain it to you. We did. Uh, did we honored the Timothy Hill Ranch. We raised money for them. And we had uh, a Goodfellas theme that night. Right. We had uh, uh, Paul Savino came out. One of the nice things about our organization, like you mentioned, uh, we have a relationship with a ticket broker. We have a lot of celebrities and uh, athletes that like to support us. So Paul Savino came out and we actually were able to uh, to interview him. And it was a great turnout. And again, it's our events are networking focus. So you're not sitting down having a chicken dinner. Right. You're actually up meeting people. And I think it's good for networking, in addition to the tips you provided, that someone explain how they can be of help or provide value to the person they're talking to or their clients, and maybe also what they're looking for, at least at that event. They're looking to meet so-and-so or people you know, with a certain background. So the ticket broker you know, it might be a unique way to get tickets, and uh, it might be a valuable experience for that lawyer or professional to take their clients to a unique event and this tech broker can help them achieve that exactly i think what you find a lot at our events um on the networking side is that um most pink time members they say you know what I, I wasn't even really coming here looking for business i just heard about it i heard i wanted to be part of it and as a result of that they're just talking and meeting people and the next thing you know they're saying wow what a great guy do you know mike yeah i know mike oh you know ray yeah and then they're doing business as a result of that when they weren't even looking for the business, just and, as a result of the relationship. And, and unlike some charity events, you don't have to know how to play golf or you're not exactly going to embarrass right. yourself over it. And uh, you just gotta you're not, know how to say you're, hello. You're not stuck at a dinner table between two people you don't want to know and never want to see again. And right. But you can just, you know, find something to talk about and perhaps something in common with the other people there. And you're supporting a great cause. And it's typically the charity. Because that's our main job is to bring awareness to these local Long Island based charities that need our help. You know, we export so much charitable money off of Long Island and only receive a portion of it back that, you know, one of Mike's pet, Mike Cave's pet peeves was, hey, we want to be 100 percent transparent. And we want all the money that we raise to stay here and do and do local impact. Charities. And if there's a charity that thinks from Long Island that thinks it would be worthy of uh, funding or a grant from you, how can they get, you know, how can they approach Pink Tie about that? Right. So what I recommend they do, like, again, go on our website and uh, get our contact uh, information as at uh, info at um, pinktie.org and tell us your story. We want to hear your story. Um, I think it was about two years ago, um, there, was a, uh, there was a child um, that was had terminal cancer. And they were able to reach out to us. And, and like that, we put together a program, um, an event for them uh, out on Long Beach. A doctor donated his um, his house, put together a nice event, an event for them. And all the money that was raised, 
uh, went to the little child. And it's funny because the parents didn't know us. And they were like, oh, well, our daughter is sick, so she can't be there. And the little five-year-old girl said, no, mommy, this is my party. I have to be here. <laughs> so so it was such a really touching, nice event. And, and, it, and it's, it's so heartwarming to see so many strangers come out to support somebody that they don't even know. So we, we go out of our way to provide a great night out for the people that come and include the networking and also supporting great causes. So that's the common thread that people want to help, you know, some group or individual or charity in need. Absolutely. For us, we're you know we have eighteen thousand active emails. We could put three hundred people together in four days in our sleep. That's how many people that are really involved in this charity. That if we're going to host an event or do something, and we put it out to our network, our Pink Tie Nation. We, so it's we, like a flash charity event. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, <laughs> certain ones that we don't pass, but if the money's needed somewhere and we have the opportunity to, to give our vendors a little added value and do good for somebody else, we take advantage of it. Okay, we just have a moment or two left. So, sure. Michael, what are your final thoughts? Uh, so, listen, in closing, I mean, we want to thank you guys. Uh, we really appreciate you having us on here. Um, we ask you guys to come out, support us, May 22nd, 5th Annual Pink Tie event. Come see Scott Stapp and Creed. Tickets are only $150. We appreciate everything that you guys do, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at the event. And there are other, are other events through the year. Yep. If, if some, in case someone... Pinktie.org, you know, get on the website. We have them hosted. Okay, Ray, any final thoughts? Yeah, again, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Ken, for having us, and uh, thank your audience, your radio audience, for listening to us. And uh, we hope you, you know, come out and support us. And again, visit our website, www.pinktie.org. That has all the latest information about what we're doing. You can sign up for our mailing list and be included in our events and basically just listen join us become a goal giver and someone has really nothing to lose by attending the events there the money's going to charity all of it's going to charity and you'll help them break the ice with the networking process absolutely and you'll have a great time and, and you'll have a great time. an hour and a half of seeing creed <laughs> last last and not least i would like to thank our guests uh michael passantino from pink tie and uh, he's also involved with Trinity Solar and Ray Thomas, who's also involved with Pink Tie. Keep in mind the event on May 22nd and other events throughout the year. You're listening to Law You Should Know here on 90.3 WHVC, the voice of Nass Community College. Also over the internet at ncc.edu slash WHPC. Please join us next week at this same time for another program on Law You Should Know.